Hey everyone, welcome to the second part of this drawing tutorial on drawing with concepts. If you do not know what is concepts, it's a drawing app that's available on iPads, Android and Windows. This app is based on a freemium model which means the basic drawing tools are free. However, to unlock all the tools, you have to pay. Now in this drawing tutorial, I will just be using the free tools available. Alright, let's jump right in. One important thing to know is all the files that you create are stored locally on the tablet. There is no cloud syncing. So let's just go through all the things. So the basic features are free. You will have access to the infinite canvas, 16 brushes and 5 layers. So let me just click here. Free works for me. Let's create a new canvas by clicking this plus icon at the bottom. Now if this is the first time you are launching the app, you'll see this. Let's set up these preferences very quickly. So I am right-handed and for finger action, I'm going to choose pen canvas because I am using an active stylus, the Apple Pencil. If you are using one of those capacitive styluses or rubber tip styluses, I suggest you choose use active too. And for two finger tap, I'm going to choose undo. For three fingers, I'm going to choose show color wheel. And for tap and hold, I'm going to choose the color picker. After you close the preferences, take a look at the tools on the left side. There are six drawing tools already selected for you, so I want to use my own tools. So I'm going to click here. I'm using an active stylus, so I'm going to choose dynamic pen because this pen will allow you to work with pressure sensitivity. If you are using a rubber tip stylus or those styluses with a disc tip, you may want to choose fountain that lets you draw with thin and thick lines depending on the speed at which you are drawing. So if you are using Apple Pencil or the Samsung S Pen or any pen that supports pressure sensitivity, uh, pick dynamic pen. For the second tool, I'm going to choose fill. So these are the basic drawing tools available. Let's take a look at the tools that I have here. I have dynamic pen, fill, a soft pencil, watercolor, another soft pencil, and this is the eraser. Now just below this tool palette, we have some colors here. This is the color palette. I am not going to use this color palette, so I'm going to use my own one. So I'm going to press and hold this circle here. That will call up color options and the palettes that you saw earlier, they are highlighted with this thick black line. So I'm going to uncheck those three color palettes and choose new palette. When you click away, you notice that this color palette now it's empty. You can choose up to eight colors to fit into this palette. We'll add those colors later on. And take a look at the layers palette here. Click it. Make sure the sorting is set to automatic. And currently we have two layers, the pen layer and this layer called new layer. Now if you want to create a new layer, you can click here and this will turn the sorting back to manual, which is what I do not want. So let me just undo. Remember to undo, just use two fingers and tap on the canvas and the sorting is back to automatic. For this drawing tutorial, I'm just going to draw something really simple because the focus is on introducing you to the tools available and the workflow. So I'm going to start by drawing with the dynamic pen, which is already selected. Now if you tap the dynamic pen again, this page of brushes will pop up. So let's just draw something really simple. Let's just draw 3D alphabets. This is the letter A. All right. So notice here in the layers palette, all the strokes will go to the pen layer if you have the sorting set to automatic. Now let's color this letter A. I'm going to click this fill tool and I'm going to select a different color. I'm going to select a bright orange. These colors, by the way, they are from the Copic system. So for the fill tool, you actually have to draw the shape 
to color the shape and for the shadows let's pick a darker orange like this unfortunately for this particular app there is no color blending for the layer so you cannot set multiply to multiply over other layers so to paint shadows you have to select the colors yourself i want to bring your attention to the layers palette again now notice right now i have the fill tool selected so now this layer is selected the fill layer is selected when i switch to the pen tool Notice how the layer switches automatically to the pen layer. So now when I draw with the pen, all the lines will go to this layer. And if I click the fill tool, all the color fills will go to this layer. So this is done automatically. That is extremely convenient because you don't have to go and create layers manually for strokes, for line art, and another layer for colors. So a new layer will be created for each different type of tool that you click on. So if you click on pencil, it's going to create a pencil layer. So for this pencil, let me choose a warm, uh, warm color, a dark color. Now this app, it features infinite canvas, which means you can zoom in all the way and all the details will still be very clear because this is actually a vector app. So for the next drawing, let's just draw something really simple. Okay, so the line here, it's much thinner than I want. So let me just undo by using my two fingers to tap on the canvas twice. Let's change the thickness of the stroke by tapping on this area here. You see there is some numbers and it's followed by PTS points. So tap on it and drag to the right side to increase the thickness of the stroke. I'm going to increase it to the same thickness as this black line and I'm going to draw this letter B. Again, I'm going to draw a 3D letter and I'm going to color this again. So earlier on, I mentioned that I have two soft pencils. So I'm going to click the other soft pencil and choose a red color perhaps. And I am going to color it Oops, this is too thin again. Let's uh, increase the stroke size. Now, if you're using the Apple Pencil or the Samsung S Pen, you can actually tilt your stylus to create broad strokes. Um, before that, let me just show you what happened here. So I have used a soft pencil to create the lines and I used another soft pencil the pink color pencil to color. So both the strokes, they will appear on this layer, which is what I do not want because they are both pencils, they will go to this layer. So what I want to do now is to create a new layer. And I'm going to drag this layer below here because I want the colors to be below the line art. So now I'm going to select this stroke and delete it away. To do that, you can actually assign the selection tool to one of these buttons here. The selection tool is this arrow tool here. Or you can use the shortcut by tapping on the canvas and hold it for a split second or so. And then tap at the bottom here. Make sure that item picker comes up and move it to where that stroke is. And once it's selected, you see the options here pop up. So now you can click delete to delete that earlier stroke. Let's go back to coloring this letter. Make sure that you have selected the layer that's beneath the letter. So I'm going to select my soft pencil again and select a blue color and it seems like the opacity is at 23% so let me just increase it all the way to 100 and let's color it oops let me try and color it like this rather than have the apple pencil tilted okay for the shadows uh, let's make it a bit darker 
right this combination actually doesn't work that well i mean this color combination so let me see if i can change the color of the stroke so in order to do that we need to select the stroke first so again tap on the canvas and hold for a split second choose the item picker and move your finger over the stroke it should highlight and lift it up so now it's selected and now we can change to a different color oh let's change it to red because it's more obvious tap away and tap away let's select the stroke beneath again now notice i have to change the color several times so this is maybe where you can add that particular color to the color palette so i'm going to click and hold this color and drag it to the color palette like that so now it turns uh, red or pink and i'm going to do the same for the last stroke here and just click here and it turns into this uh, pink color. Now I realize the outline is in pink or red and the circles within, they are still in gray. So let me just turn off the background color so that you can see clearly. Now there is another way you can select these circles, which is to press and hold onto the canvas. This time, instead of selecting item picker, select lasso and draw a selection around the thing you want to select. I need to select it again so once again press and hold onto the canvas and select lasso and now both items are selected and I can quickly switch to this color here and tap away all right so let's turn on the background color again now this color doesn't look very nice so I want to create a different color for that so this time I'm going to use this watercolor brush that I have preset here and the watercolor brush is at 50% opacity which i guess is all right i'm going to choose a red color for it or maybe a green color uh, let's choose red because it's easier to see and i'm going to color it oops uh, make sure that you create a new layer for it but remember earlier i said that um, all the tools will create their own layers automatically that's only when you have the sorting set to automatic so now as I paint watercolor over the lines um, it's actually all going to the pencils layer which is what I do not want so I'm going to undo again I'm going to set the sorting to automatic and the uh, watercolor layer it's created automatically so now I can just apply the watercolor brush stroke like this and the watercolor brush strokes will apply I mean will go onto its own watercolor layer there this color combination doesn't work very well so I'm going to change the color for the watercolor I'm going to double click on the watercolor layer this will help me focus specifically on the layer and turn all the other layers up to like 10 percent opacity and i'm going to use the lasso tool to select everything here now this is actually made out of several strokes so in order to select all the strokes i have to draw a lasso around it and now i can change the color to something else let's change it to orange I may want to use orange again so let me just drag the orange to the palette and change it to orange and let me tap away and see what happens and click again onto the watercolor palette to basically bring back all the layers so now I think it looks slightly better this letter B it's a bit bigger than the A let me try and make it the same size so once again I'm going to select this uh, thing using the lasso tool and when this transform um, tool appears just click one of the corners to resize it now as you resize you notice that you can actually resize it vertically or horizontally if you want to lock the aspect ratio just press just have your finger touch the canvas and you can lock the aspect ratio 
All right, now this looks about the same size. I noticed some watercolor that's out of the stroke, so I want to erase that. So I'm going to choose the Erase tool here. By the way, you notice my tool palette is now at the bottom right side. So you can actually drag the tool palette around just by pressing on the selected tool and just moving it around on the canvas. So I have already selected Erase and I am going to erase the watercolor that's outside. Now notice as I erase, it's actually erasing the stroke as well. That's because I have this uh, selected. When the eraser is selected and you have all selected, it means it's going to erase everything on every layer. So let me just undo this and I'm going to click active. So now I'm going to erase on the active layer, which is the watercolor layer that I have selected. So now I can erase like this and notice the stroke, it's still intact. So that's the general workflow. The most important thing to take note of is actually the sorting for the layers, whether it's automatic or manual. So now that you have created your artwork, you may want to export it out to share it onto um, Instagram, Facebook, or somewhere else. You can click this button here, export, and choose from the different file formats that are available here. And if you want to have a specific fixed size canvas, you can actually go into the preferences and type in the artboard size. There are a lot of features in concepts that I did not cover and there are actually a lot of other really wonderful tools. However, they are all locked behind the paywall. But I do recommend buying some of the brushes that you like because it really helps support the developers who come up with this app. It's a really wonderful app. All right, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope it's helpful. See you in the next video. Bye.